spine and pelvis topics. So obviously CT and lumbar spine, um, cross table spine work, scoliosis, sacrum coccyx, SI joints, hip, make sure you know trauma and non-trauma hip views, pelvis, know your pelvis anatomy. I'm gonna bet you all sorts of money that there's gonna be pelvis anatomy on your boards. Uh, review the inlet outlet views, Jude views, those specialty views that you might not do a lot at clinical. Myelogram and HSG are also included in this section. Some spine study tips. Obviously anatomy, go through your anatomy. Do you know pedicle versus lamina? Um, and what I remember from my anatomy class is my teacher taught me to do this. So your hands are spinous process. Your um, humerus are the pedicle, forearms are your lamina. Because your pedicle um, is closer to your body or your person. So P is closer to your person or the body of your vertebrae, if that'll help you. Uh, landmarks, know those landmarks, topographical landmark levels, obviously central rays, SIDs. When would you ever increase your SID? Might be a trauma or cross table situation if you can't get to 40. Two bangles, know your two bangles for C-spine. Uh, AP versus PA. When would you when would you change that? Oblique degrees. You're going 45 degrees um, usually for C and L. T spines the outlier at that 70 75, which you probably have never done or never seen an oblique T spine. But make sure you go through that uh, positioning chart. Know what is visualized on a posterior oblique versus an anterior oblique for C, T, and L. So pay attention to those. What anatomy is visualized on the lateral? Remember, C spine is different from your T and L, what you see in a lateral. T spine questions, you might uh, see these questions pop up about orthostatic breathing. I want you to review the anode heel effect. I always use the term fat cat. The fat goes under the cat for the cathode. We use a right lateral. Flexion extension views could be for C-spine or lumbar spine. Right and left bending views are done in the AP position, so standing right and left. And then scoliosis potentially is usually a question about PA versus AP uh, regarding breast tissue dose, and you want your increased SID, obviously. So C-spine, some things to remember. 15 to 20 degrees cephalad, you're going to C4. What is demonstrated in the open mouth or odontoid, which you might um, also refer to it as. Lateral, why do we do it at 72 inches? Why? OID, right? If they're standing up against that wall stand, their shoulder is here, but their spine's here, we have to compensate for this much OID by increasing our SID. What do you see on lateral C-spine? Do you see circles? No, you're gonna see the circles on the oblique. So the ob Obliquity here should be 45 degrees oblique. You see nice open intervertebral foramina or the O's. Make sure you know what you can see on a posterior cervical spine oblique. So which side are you seeing? Are you seeing the side closest to the image receptor or side away? Watch for that um, versus the lateral. And then potentially questions about if you were to do a posterior oblique, which way would your tube be angled versus an anterior oblique, which way would your tube be angled? So if they're posterior, you're angling up, anterior angling down. Swimmers, uh, go back to your textbook for central ray for swimmers. The central ray you may use at the clinical site might not be uh, the exact textbook. When would you use flexion extension views? potentially for looking for whiplash. Um, and just keep in mind that a doctor has to remove that cervical collar. As technologists, we are not to remove that cervical collar. Uh, AP Dens or Fuchs method is this AP version here, which drops that Dens right in the middle of the foramen magnum. Or reverse is the PA, the Judd method here. Again, shows us the same image. What is the advantage of the PA over AP? Decreased thyroid dose. Okay. T-spine. I would say there's not a ton to T-spine. 
Um, it's fairly straightforward. Central ray, T7, almost identical to chest. Um, you might see some questions on the orthostatic breathing or the anode heel effect. What do you see on a lateral T-spine? Do you see circles? Yes, you see the O's, right? Intervertebral foramina. So you're looking at the O's on the lateral. Lumbar spine. Uh, we've got a couple of choices for lumbar spine here. So we have uh, central ray for the AP. Most of the textbooks are going to tell you to center at crest. Our textbook specifies 1417 um, is a different centering than an 11 by 14 cassette. But for the most part, you're going to crest. You want to bend the knees on the AP. Why do we bend the knees? Reduce that lordotic curve in the lumbar spine. Lateral, where should you center? You want to be um, anterior to the postal, posterior surface. Ideally, don't center too far back. The L5-S1 spot. What would change your centering or what would change maybe your tube angle? Things to keep in mind would be the shape of the pelvis. Remember, um, female and male pelvis are different shapes. What line do you need to line up for the L5-S1? And that's the interiliac line. That line goes from um, iliac crest to iliac crest. What would be demonstrated on the flexion extension views for the lumbar? And that's that spondylolisthesis, which is that fun word to sort of spit out there. Um, but that's that forward motion of the vertebrae on top of each other. Obliques. Uh, 45 degree obliques. You're going to center two inches medial to the ASIS. What are we looking at? We're looking at those Z's. We're looking for the Z's here. Or the Scotty dogs are also referred to. Um, make sure you know what anatomy is on the Scotty dog, especially the eye, right? Because that is our indicator of proper centering for an oblique. Where is the eye on the vertebrae? Is it too far forward? Is it too far back? And be able to sort of determine rotation as far as that goes. If you keep in mind that the nose is um, the transverse process, where do you see the transverse process the most? You see it on the AP, right? So if you are still seeing a good amount of transverse process, then you're actually not obliqued enough. All right, so watch for that. This was a tip uh, I will give credit to our Kettering teacher on this one. He has a fun way of remem remembering posterior versus anterior position. So he uses fresh fried chicken for posterior. So C-spine, you're going to see the foramina farthest. So he uses fresh. T-spine is the Z's and farthest. L-spine is also C, Z's, but closest. So chicken. Um, and then it's reversed for anterior. My tip is memorize one. Simply memorize CTL posterior, and in your head, just remember, anterior will be opposite if it's too much for you. Um, what are you seeing? Are you seeing foramina? Are you seeing pedicles? Are you seeing O's? Can you see circles? Can you see Z's? What does that mean? In your brain, picture your spine image, what are you seeing on the screen? What are you visualizing? Scoliosis. So scoliosis, I would say most likely what kind of questions would they ask about this? I would definitely recommend reviewing sort of the rad safety, essentially components of scoliosis. Why would PA versus AP Reduce breast tissue. Most often your patients are teenagers. And we're going to use a longer SID. There's the Ferguson method, which uses a block to elevate the hip on the convex side. And then the Cobb method is a measurement tool um, for the radiologist. So you might see that terminology for scoliosis. Sacrum coccyx or SI joints. AP sacrum, 15 up. AP coccyx, 10 down. 15 to the nose, 10 to the toes. You guys know that one. SI joints, AP cephalic angle will be 
30 degrees for males, 35 for females. Remember, these obliques are not as steep. All right, it's less than you think. And another credit to the Kettering teacher here for the helpful SI joint hit. If you can see in the image here, he's holding his hands off at a little bit of an angle at the pelvis, and that is how the SI joints um, lie in your pelvis. So turn yourself into the oblique, and you can see here at this picture, in this oblique, which joint would open. It would be this joint up here would be your open one. This joint on this side over here will be closed. Where should you center? Uh, go back to your textbook centering for that one. And just remember, for posterior obliques, you're demonstrating side up. Well, what if you flipped it? and your patient was now prone and you're doing an anterior oblique. Which one will be open? Are you able to think through that process? Can you figure that out? It's usually always the opposite. All right, hip and pelvis. I want you to really spend some time on both of these anatomy pictures, both this one and the side version. AP hip, you guys know, we're gonna internally rotate that leg 15 to 20 degrees. Why? Why do we do that? Put the femoral neck in true AP position, right? The frog lateral, you want to abduct the leg 40 degrees from vertical, let it drop out. What do you what is your cross table option? The Danielus Miller or the Clements Nakayama? The Clements Nakayama is for when both hips are fractured. Uh, the obliques or the Jude methods or the 45 degree obliques. Um, and then we're gonna look at the same side, right? A side up and side down. The axial pelvis or inlet and outlet views. Inlet uh, is the 40 degrees caudal, demonstrates symphysis pubis, anterior and ischial bones. Outlet is separated out by male and female pelvis. The female pelvis or the degrees for anything in the female pelvis is going to be higher than the male almost every time. All right. This is looking for the pelvic rami without foreshortening. All right. Myelograms. Uh, the contrast media is administered via spinal puncture. It's into the subarachnoid space through intrathecal injection. Preferred site is L3, L4. Make sure you know that. Um, and this term here, the conus medullaris, is at the lower, oh, I jumped ahead, lower border of L1 and they have to inject lower than this level. You might want to review the term cisternal puncture. That's between the atlanto occipital joint space. I doubt it'll, that'll be on there, but you now remember the term. We just kind of refreshed it. Why do we use water soluble? Where is it deposited? And primary pathology for myelogram is the HNP. Make sure you know what HNP stands for. And then to round up here is HSG. So HSG is included in the pelvis section. Um, what kind of questions could they ask on HSG? They could ask anatomy. Uh, it could be something about infertility, um, that this exam would be performed along with an OBGYN. It could be both diagnostic and therapeutic, right? Because sometimes we open up those fallopian tubes. And then why are we doing it? We're looking to check patency of the fallopian tubes and see if they're open. Okay.